We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust with Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith. Call 877-PLANNER now. Ooh, yeah. And we welcome you back another hour right here immediately. We get started. Uh, happy Monday to you or whenever you happen to be listening to this program. You can go online. Don't forget boomersbraintrust.com. Catch our first five and our guest interviews right there at boomersbraintrust.com. Now, coming up on the program today, uh, we're going to have Professor Plum back with this hour's money strategy session. We're going to talk first up about buying an annuity inside an IRA. These are strategies, and we hear different things about this topic from a bunch of different sources, but the professor is going to tell us exactly uh, what's right and what's wrong with that particular strategy. So we'll get your emails as well, getting the answers with the Brain Trust panel of experts, which includes Terry Keyes today. And remember, if you have any money question at all, anything at all, Social Security is a big topic last hour, uh, education, whatever it is, saving for college, you call us right here, 877-PLANNER, and we'll get to your question right away. Our life segment at 51 After is going to deal with taking a look at the workforce in America and the role that boomers play in it. It might surprise you. Dinah Smith has a report on that for all of us boomers. It's all just ahead, but first, the first five headlines of the hour, Dinah. Yes, sir. One step closer to being a Jetson. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's not because of the flying car, but oh, Google. Dang. Google has self-driving cars. Did you know about this? Yeah, I've heard about yeah, that. Yeah. Well, they're already able to uh, navigate the freeways pretty well, although, you know, they have to have a driver ready to take control if needed. But, uh, you know, city driving still poses a, a pretty big challenge for the car's computers. But a lot of scientists and engineers are now saying that next 20 years we're going to see more and more of these things and that the kids uh, who are born, you know, in the next five years or uh -huh. so, they're never going to have to learn how to drive a car. It's going to be done for them. Kind of scary. Uh, Driverless cars, that was an interesting phenomenon. These things I... are already street legal in Nevada, Florida, Michigan, California, and I guess Texas is working on some legislation as well. Really? Stunning. They have also, the uh, next technology is driverless, passengerless cars. Did you know that? <laughs> they had those. It's amazing technology. I'm going to get one of those myself. <laughs> Sounds like a winner. Sounds like a winner. Uh, the uh, IRS, uh, Wallet Hub uh, IRS audit report is out. We get these every once in a while. This is what they found. The smaller the income, the higher the tax evasion. I would think that would make sense. I mean, in a sort of weird, twisted way. Hmm. Uh, the smaller the income. They found that for both consumers and corporations, uh, there, there's a higher rate of tax evasion among people with smaller incomes. If, you, if they make less than $200,000, audited consumers pay 83% higher penalties. These wow. are people that have been audited. Right as a percentage of gross income of, of AGI than people making more than $200,000. And audited corporations that earn $250,000 to $1 million pay more than 11 times higher penalties than corporations earning ten to $50 million. So you can see that. Now, uh, individuals making $10 million or more are 3,933% more likely to be audited than those who oh. make twenty-five dollars to $100,000. <laughs> Professor Plum talked about this one time. Well, of course, guess what? How much money are you going to get out of somebody who's you know, making twenty-five grand? Why do you rob banks? That's where the money is. <laughs> so here's some good news, you skinny little boomers. Yeah, you really are skinny. In fact, you're skinnier than the generation which is coming up behind us. That's according to research done in Australia. Uh, University of Adelaide researchers uh, used data from 89 to 90 and then 07 to 08, and they compared the attributes of the two generations when they were 25 to 44 years of age, and they found that those born in Gen X had higher rates of obesity and diabetes than baby boomers at the same age. Really? Yeah, so they're not sure oh. what this is going to bode ahead. Uh, you know, it could be that this is a sign of a, an entirely different switch in the way people are taking care of themselves. They thought that they would find them to be much healthier, but that wasn't the case. Actually, I, Although, yeah. I will say, Gen Xers, they're better educated, they're less likely, likely to smoke, and they're more likely to be employed if they're female. Oh. Interesting. But they're eating more. But they're eating more and not taking care of themselves. Well, I see that. I actually see I see it among boomers, too. But if you notice that, I mean, there are a lot of kids there. Yeah. I was going to say something crass, like you've seen all the fat kids there are. Out there. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. That would be wrong of me because, you know, words hurt. But, you know. All so right. does John. Hey, we're boomers. You know, we <laughs> say it like it is. Come on. All right? Hey, uh, speaking of telling it like it is, we got a guy here who's going to give us some money advice. Once again, Professor Plum's going to join us. So if you've got a money question, you can call right now. 877-PLANNER is our number, P-L-A-N-N-E-R. -A -A -N -N -E Get on board. We are coming right back.